In today's stealth camping mission and stealth camping adventure, we're going to be taking my self-converted camper van right to the heart of central London and trying to find a place to park up for the night instead of paying hundreds and hundreds of pounds for a hotel. And just to spice things up, just to go typically British, typically royal, we're going to try and visit and drive past at least three or four different famous landmarks here in the UK. There's the London Eye. There's the Marriott Hotel, one of the most famous hotels in all of London. There's Big Ben. And then make our way to the Queen. Oh God, the Queen doesn't, oh God. Queen, God, I'm so sorry. Rest in peace, Queen. Right then, without further ado, let's crack on with this, probably about a 45 minute drive. First stop, Putney Bridge. I bloody hate Putney Bridge. So over the past few years around the world globally in all of the major cities there's been a new rule and regulation that's been introduced and it's called ULES or LES and it basically stands for ultra low emission zone. So unfortunately that means I've actually got to pay £12.50 per day to drive my vehicle into the city for today and also tomorrow when I leave because my van doesn't meet the emission standards. So the park up and the place where I'm actually staying tonight has been recommended to me from Charlie, who uh, I've been on many van adventures with in this vehicle many years ago when the van wasn't even a van before I converted it. And uh, he actually went the other week and stayed at this exact spot. And it looked too good to be true, to be honest with you. The London Eye right in front of the van. So uh, I'm hoping I'm gonna try and do exactly the same. We're getting closer and closer a couple of hundred meters to Putney Bridge. And here is my first moment of, I'm gonna say a traffic jam, but just slow traffic. Let's be polite, you know, I'm from the countryside. After you, sir, no problem. I'm in no rush, we're not going anywhere. So this road that I'm on right now and Putney High Street, like I said earlier, I'm 90% sure. How have I just stalled the van? Putney High Street is one of the most polluted streets, roads in all of London. I'm pretty sure of that just because of the vast amount of traffic that comes through there every single day. Well, we made it over Putney Bridge. Well, we haven't, I'm at the start of it. That might be the worst bit of traffic out the way. And to be honest with you, that wasn't too bad. I don't get why people have nice cars in London. I honestly don't. It's absolutely pointless having a sports car or some sort of fast, expensive vehicle because you honestly you can't get over 30 mile an hour it is absolutely pointless well we're going past a few country embassies i cannot think in my mind right now what embassy that is we're almost at her majesty the queen's buckingham palace oh god i keep forgetting that rest in peace queenie where am i now i think i'm near hyde park my london knowledge is not great buckingham palace so close yet so far this is the most royal this van has ever been what the hell am i doing up here buckingham palace ladies and gentlemen should be on our right don't ask me for any history lessons but that's where the royal family live well quick little pit stop through buckingham palace and then on to our next famous destination which is going to be westminster bridge and big ben Oh, we're at Trafalgar Square, I think. Yeah, Trafalgar Square up ahead. Nice. All this journey has done to me so far has just made me appreciate where I live. Is that Little Ben or is that Big Ben? I think that's Big Ben in front of me. So, so far we've ticked off the list Putney Bridge, which is not famous whatsoever, but Buckingham Palace, <laughs> Trafalgar Square, Big Ben, we're gonna go and hopefully park up right next to the London Eye and then we'll have a bit of a stroll around this evening to uh, get into the tourist spirit. And then I'm gonna come back in the van and cook the most amazing homemade spaghetti bolognese because why not? There's Big Ben, just, well, literally parallel to me on my right hand side. There's the big fella. We're going over Westminster Bridge. There is the London Eye to my left hand side. It does look pretty cool. I've got to say London at night. It is very beautiful. Okay, hopefully, hopefully ladies and gentlemen, home for the night is on my left hand side. If 
if I can find somewhere to park. Charlie, if you've done it, I must be able to do it. Oh no, no. Is there anywhere to park around here? I fail. I can't park there. There's somebody there. What about this? Can I park here? What's in here? What is this? Parking suspension, no loading. Okay, I can't show you because I've got a traffic warden lady. She's coming. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I was just pulling over to check something. <laughs> Security. Security. Okay, right. Can't stay here, coach is on. She's going off to tell that man as well. High security everywhere here. Taxis, coaches, sorry love. Sugar, where the hell am I gonna park? Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be honest with you, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing now, apart from driving around to try and find somewhere to park. So, as soon as I do, I'll let you guys know. Well, I can finally say, welcome to tonight's park up and welcome home. I literally drove about eight minutes from the last clip where you saw me trying to park up right beside the London Eye. And uh, I actually just went on the app Park For Night and found this place, like I say, eight minutes away. And I am right outside the Imperial War Museum. I'm on pretty much a main road with traffic lights either side, cars coming past, absolutely left, right and centre, but it's level. I assume later we get into tonight, it's obviously gonna get quieter. I can shut up shop and uh, this might be one of the most stupid, ridiculous ideas that I think I've had. So I haven't actually been able to see any parking signs. I am pretty much parallel to this bus. So just had a look at the sign and it says permit holders only from uh, 8.30 a.m. I think it was or 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Uh, it's not 6.30 right now. I think it's about quarter to six. So I can't imagine you're going to get a traffic warden coming past at this time of night. So what I might do is just sit tight for half an hour, see what's what. And then that basically means after 6.30, I hope that I should be able to stay here, no problems. I'll just need to leave by eight o'clock in the morning because then it's permit holders only again. <laughs> well, like I said, welcome home. And what's crazy about this is out there is just the chaos and the madness of London. But inside here, it is honestly my own little tranquil man cave, my den, a bit of peace, serenity and quiet. It is a little bit chaotic right now because I've got all my camera stuff, bags and the food on the bed. But it's so funny that honestly, just shutting the curtains, shutting the blinds and just being in here makes it feel like an entirely different world. How am I gonna sleep in here? I have no idea because I can obviously hear the noise of the cars and stuff driving past. I expect it's not going to be the best night's sleep that I ever get, but uh, stealth coming in London, baby, we're doing it. So for those of you that haven't seen my beloved camper van, Mary, let me introduce you. So very quickly, we've got my queen size double bed. We've got some storage up there, a TV, a fridge in here, which, uh, I've got to be honest with you, absolutely stinks right now because uh, I left some food in here not so long ago and uh, the smell of a mouldy bad fridge is uh, wafting out of it when I open the door. So I'll be keeping that shut. We've got a bench here and a double bench here with some storage and things like that. And then there's actually a toilet underneath this one. Tonight, obviously where I'm gonna be cooking, two hob gas burner, oven, sink, and uh, my pee bottle, which is gonna come in Super, super handy because obviously there's nowhere where I can rush off into the bush and go for a wee. So uh, I'm going to be have to using 
the van and the pee bottle to empty my bladder. So I do actually want to go and explore a bit of London, show you guys a few of the famous sights, the sounds like Big Ben, like the London Eye and all of that. And I'm only a 15 to 20 minute walk away where I'm parked now to those famous iconic places. So uh, first things first, we're gonna crack on with dinner, get some food in the belly and then go out and explore London for the rest of the evening. So before we actually crack on and get on with the spaghetti bolognese, which I can't wait for because it was absolutely delicious last time and I'm sure this time it should taste even better. I actually wanted to let you guys know about today's video sponsor, who is Sterling Insurance, who are actually the company that have insured this van from the day I bought it when it was a builder's van and it had nothing in it to the camper van that you see now. They've insured it literally for the last two years. I've traveled all over the place in this vehicle from many different places in the UK and even into Europe. And that's a great thing about Sterling because I actually have 90 day breakdown cover when I go into Europe. So if I do break down in Belgium, in France, in Germany, whatever it is, I'm actually covered for if and when, and fingers crossed it never happens, the vehicle actually does potentially break down. I'm also covered for things like personal possession so that if anybody broke in and they stole anything from here, then that is also covered. And they've also got a hotline that is open seven days a week so you can actually claim. Sterling Insurance can literally cover anybody and pretty much any vehicle, no matter how weird, how wonderful or wacky it is, whether it's a standard camper van like this that you've self-converted, whether it's a pre-made, bought camper van or maybe a five-star luxury motorhome. The best thing about it is that pretty much anyone can also be insured from a mature 90-year-old driver to a young 18-year-old driver who is literally just about to pass their test. I get the question all the time, what insurance do you use? And uh, it has been sterling and it continues to be sterling for multiple different reasons, as I've mentioned, from the breakdown cover, from the personal possessions. If you guys want to check them out for yourself, then make sure to head down to the link in this video's description, click on it, and they can actually give you a call back and you can get a quote to see how much it's going to cost to insure your own vehicle. Tonight, we're going pure Italian yet again, because it's just probably one of my favorite meals ever, spaghetti bolognese. And I tried this recipe a good few months ago now, and uh, I absolutely loved it. It was the first time I'd ever cooked a proper spaghetti bolognese from scratch, because I used to just buy a dolmio sauce, chuck it in the pan and brown everything off, and uh, that was my spaghetti bolognese. But making it from scratch is a thousand times more tasty. Here we go. Here are all of the ingredients that we have for tonight's spaghetti bolognese. We've got some chopped tomatoes. Oh dear, I think I meant to buy plum tomatoes. Well, I've already cocked up, but we've got some cherry tomatoes, onions, beef, bacon, a plant of basil, because why not? Some leeks, no, not leeks, celery, sorry, rosemary. I bought some garlic bread to uh, chuck in the oven just because it'll be nice to soak all of this up. I'm gonna crack on now cook all of this and uh, show you the process. If you want to try this recipe at home, I'll leave the uh, ingredients and a link to the recipe down in the description as well, because uh, like I said, it's probably one of the nicest bolognese's that I've ever had. Oh no, the onions are gonna make me cry in a minute. It does feel nice to be back in my own van again. I was out in a uh, 70,000 pound luxury motorhome just last week. It is nice and it's a hell of a lot of fun to go and experience different vehicles because going and checking out some of the quirkier vehicles and just the different types of campers that you can get, I'm absolutely loving it. Oh, send help please. When you're in here doing stuff like this, cooking, you kind of forget where you've parked. It almost doesn't feel real that I'm literally on a very busy road with the Imperial War Museum just over there. It feels like right now I could be in the middle of the forest or out in nature somewhere. The onion is all chopped, celery chopped, carrot chopped, which is kind of the uh, main veggie ingredients of this recipe. And next we have got some streaky bacon rashers smoked, which need to be chopped up. And then I'm kind of ready to start frying everything. If I'm lucky, I should have some left for tomorrow morning for breakfast, even though I haven't got anything else to have with them. Maybe spaghetti bolognese for breakfast because this recipe is definitely not for one person. Smell the smoke, baby. It's not that easy to cut bacon. 
think we're now time to start actually cooking. We're definitely parked on a slope because uh, the water is struggling to drain. Why does rosemary smell like a Christmas tree? We've got 125 mil of red wine to go in. Just to make this extra delicious. So one of the final ingredients is uh, some basil. So uh, rip some leaves off that, chop it up, chuck that in, and then let it simmer, probably for about 45 minutes or so. Oh man, that just smells so goddamn good. Outside here, <laughs> it's lovely and cool because uh, in the van, cooking for the last hour and a half, it is getting very warm. Thankfully, so far, there is no ticket on the van. This road is actually quite quiet, which is good. It's, uh, like I say, it means less road noise, means I can actually get a good night's sleep. It's pretty windy and stormy tonight, so hopefully none of these trees drop down onto the road. It feels a little bit like Narnia, this. <laughs> Go through the cupboard door and you're in a completely different world. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen all night. Pasta or spaghetti or linguine, should I say, is done. It's time to serve up, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, sheep are creepers. I just realized I completely forgot garlic bread. But right now, to be honest with you, I don't even care because it's quarter past eight. I started cooking this about six o'clock. Oh my God. That's about five kilograms of bolognese. It smells so good. To top it all off, some pecorino romano parmigiano. Now, last time I cooked this, I chopped up my pasta and people slated me in the comments, but I'm sorry, I'm gonna do exactly the same this time because it just makes eating food like this in a small vehicle on a small plate a hundred times easier. But have a look at that. I'm gonna get this in the belly and then we're gonna go for a bit of an exploration, go and see a few of the sights of London and then uh, come back in the van and hopefully get a good night's sleep. Oh my good God. Yeah. This is one of my favorite meals I think I've ever cooked. More cheese, Gromit. More cheese. Damn. I can't lie to you, it feels very strange to be leaving my van there while I go on a little walk around London for a bit. I do need to uh, let 20 kilos of spaghetti and bolognese go down. So I thought a nice evening stroll might be quite good. I'm gonna go for about a 15 minute walk back towards Big Ben, the London Eye, and the Houses of Parliament. So uh, I'll see you when I get there. What I've just quickly done is actually marked on the map where I've parked the van, because if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't have had a clue where the hell I'm walking back to. But I can just about see the London Eye poking through the buildings. There she is. I can see Big Ben in the distance. Oh God, <laughs> sirens going off. Cycle lanes, which you've got to be careful so you don't get trampled by a cyclist. It's quite cool walking around London at night. Just 
arrived actually in about 10 minutes to uh, Westminster Bridge. In front of me, I've got Big Ben. There's the London Eye. There's the Marriott Hotel, one of the most famous hotels in all of London. There's Big Ben. And there is the Houses of Parliament, the River Thames, and my van is parked somewhere over there. It's absolutely amazing just sitting there or standing, people watching. You can hear all of the different accents of people from different countries walking past, all of the different bikes and opeds, and so many different things going on. Oh God, don't die, don't die, don't die. Well, not a bad little view. Well, that's nine o'clock. <laughs> Time for me to head back to the van. Made it back to the van safe and sound. Good to see the van is still here and in one piece. I was a little bit nervous leaving it thinking that uh, for whatever reason, somebody was gonna break in. They could probably smell the bolognese, but nice to go for a little stroll and let all that food go down i'm gonna get myself ready for bed fingers crossed there aren't sirens and just cars whizzing past all night but it already does seem a lot calmer than when i first arrived well it's nice to no longer have the taste of spaghetti bolognese all around my mouth but uh i'm gonna head off to bed and in the morning i'm gonna have to wake up relatively early because the parking restrictions are from 8 30 a.m onwards where i'm parked right now is permit holders only and obviously i haven't got a permit so i reckon by about nine o'clock 9 30 there's going to be a traffic warden coming past giving tickets checking vehicles so i need to make sure i'm up by at least eight o'clock and then i can shoot off out of here at 8 30 but uh, a pleasant evening in the van cooking a lovely homemade bolognese going for a little bit of a wonder around london literally an eight to ten minute walk from all of those places that i've just shown you this evening and uh fingers crossed for a semi-decent night's sleep in here good morning from a 7 30 a.m in London. Planes going up over ahead, the cars still driving by as people head off to work and try to get probably an early morning start on the roads before they start to get really, really busy. But uh, it's fairly quiet out right now to be honest with you. Temperature has definitely dropped, it feels quite nippy this morning. And uh, well, this is what the UK looks like at 7.30 in the morning. Not very light or bright, almost feels like it's night time. I didn't actually realize, but you can see the shard over there in the distance. So literally less than 50 meters from where I've parked is the, uh, the Imperial War Museum, which I came to before. Not that long ago, probably two or three years ago. So uh, not a bad little spot. Right, I think it's time to uh, jump back in the van pack away because uh, I don't want the traffic warden to be coming in about 45 minutes or so and giving me a ticket. We've got a fair bit of um, condensation in here and that's because obviously I was sleeping in here last night and I didn't actually have the fan on or any ventilation to be honest with you so I'm gonna have to get the old window vacuum out which has lost its head but it's in the cupboard down there somewhere but um yeah slept pretty good last night I've got to be honest there were sirens there were obviously noises coming pretty much throughout the entire evening I wouldn't usually even be awake this early at like half seven I think it's safe to say that London has well and truly been ticked off the list. A big fat yes, because central London, with all of these famous iconic places nearby, stealth camped, job done. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give the video a like. Please make sure to subscribe. And if you're on the hunt for insurance for your van, your car, or whatever the heck it is, make sure to check out Sterling Insurance. There'll be a link in the description. And as always, guys, I will catch you in next week's video.